Suparn, Vikrant and Mihir, a huge welcome to E-Times and we are so happy to have you with us Thank today. You. Thank you. So, you know, in the past few years, it's not just Indian shows, but I guess web shows in general have been in huge demand. The audience's taste have also developed. They have changed because of the privilege of choice. So, you know, and many genres are also being explored. On that note, I want to know from each of you, as directors, while it may be challenging to understand and keep up with the audience's demand and the kind of expectations they have, you know, do you feel there's also a pressure of reinventing yourself today that way or how do you look at it? I don't think it's a challenge. I think mm -hmm. that's the joy of reinventing because one, uh, by very nature, you know, we fundamentally change the society on a daily basis, right? Uh, also, India being a very interesting country where we have so many varieties of regions with different yeah. mindsets and understanding and cultures and so rich that to cater to them in itself is a very interesting challenge and True. the best kind of challenge. So when you have all of these people, yeah. you know, with changing mindsets growing, like you go from boomers to Gen X to Gen Z to yeah. I don't know what the next generation is going to be called, but whatever, right? it's changing mindsets and technology is changing fundamentally. The world has opened up absolutely completely, yeah. whether it's content or cultures. You know, today, South Korean shows are loved by everyone. Mm. My son is yeah. growing up singing South Korean songs. Okay. So, uh, yeah, he's seven yeah. and he sings Garo. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But, so do I. Like, but I like, 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 for, like, like son. Exactly, right. So, you have to adapt. So, it's yeah. literally like growing up with society. Uh, mm -hmm. Your content also evolves and changes. What was right then is wrong today. What True. is wrong today might be right tomorrow. It's yeah. a fundamental change. Constantly. Technology helps us, gives us better tools to tell storytelling. But at the same time, today, I think we're living in the golden age of storytelling in this country, which mm -hmm. arrived maybe a decade or so ago in the US, say with HBO. Yeah. Uh, and we had a golden age in the 80s, yeah. especially mm -hmm. when you had Katha Sagar, you had these insanely amazing shows, Nukkad, you had, you know, I mean, the Yejo Zindgi, yeah, yeah. yeah, great filmmakers. Uh, uh, and again, that's come back. Today, the entire emphasis is on content. And OTT, uh, you know, has taken away one big pressure, which is it's creating its own ecosystem of stars. And here yeah. today, content is the star. Writers yeah. are being celebrated. Directors and creators are being celebrated. Uh, besides the actors who are faces for telling our stories. Yeah. And you have a whole range of great actors today hmm. who, of all ages, some being rediscovered, some being brought back because of this content where we need great actors. So for us to adapt, it's a daily constant uh, it's not a challenge, it is a mandate. You hmm. have to adapt and change or, you know, you're you done You will with. miss out. Yeah. Ek I'm really looking forward to watching The Good Wife. But before that, I want to know, when a show like Family Man and Inside Edge had come out, I think back in 2019, 18, if I'm not wrong. So, you know, streaming platforms were just starting out in India and didn't have that impact. And earlier even Manoj sir, when I had spoken to him, even Angad Bedi for that matter, they told me that they weren't worried about who's going to watch. They just wanted to be part of relevant stories. But now, do you think this viewership and the target audience ka demand has weighed more importance than content? Or has there been a balance today? So, here's the thing, right? In this business, uh, honestly, nobody knows anything. If they did, yeah. we would be in a different space. You would be God. That's uh, a good thing, right? But it is a good thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but numbers <laughs> help us uh, yeah. in an interesting uh, format where we understand. Uh, it gives you. It's almost like understanding research, right? Mm -hmm. Where it tells you that this worked, this didn't work. It is a science, and we should not, as creators, be fighting it, mm -hmm. but rather understanding it because uh, you get to know what's working, what's not working. Uh, you understand a metric for an episode that that episode landed well, this didn't land well, and then yeah. you go back to it when they go to back to the drawing board for the next season or anything else that you're doing. Of why did that work? Because see, uh, one thing I've realized in life, success does not teach you anything in life. Yeah. Things not working or failure, there will be some learning coming from usme bhi ye land kiya, land nahi kiya. And you need to understand that and fix those because our profession is such where we are constantly growing. We are constantly correcting ourselves and there is nobody who's perfect. Every day is a process of growth and that helps. So rather than fighting it and saying a system, hai, it's not a system. It's a science. It's an understanding. Adapt it, take it in and end of the day go with your gut because 
they are coming from within. They are coming from a very personal space, right? Mm -hmm. uh, of your understanding, as uh, Vikrant or Supan rightly said, uh, it's coming from your life, your travels, your understanding of society and people. But again, some things may not land well, or the way you say them yeah. may not land well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll just give you an example of uh, when you go to, uh, you know, a meeting with executives when you have written an episode before even shooting or with the edit, right? Mm -hmm. They give feedback. Now, there are two ways you can look at it. And there's a very in interesting understanding I kind of took, took from, uh, 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 who's the director of uh, NOPE? Get out. Jordan, uh, Jordan Peele. Peele. He said something very interesting, uh, that it's, it's not everybody can vocalize or verbalize Correct. what they are thinking. Yeah. So don't take executive notes at face value. Mm -hmm. Try to understand or think, why are they saying what they're saying in the first place? Because I might, as an executive, I'm not a writer, I'm not a director, yeah. so I may not verbalize it properly. I might just say slow it. Or, yeah, I don't understand it. That's not feedback. But my thing as a creator should be, it's a 30-minute episode, slow it. Mm. But then you go back, oh, maybe if I do this, it's a small tweak, could be just one frame. But that is your understanding from those notes. Mm -hmm. And that is... A very long answer to your very short question. No, questions. I Sorry. understood. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Mihir, while the entertainment industry and Indian audience in general have a very star-obsessed culture, but OTT platforms have actually changed this notion and have put many underrated actors on the map today, like Pankaj Tripathi and Shefali Shah for that matter. So, how do you look at this change and do you think that the audience has also played a major role for so, their acceptance? Sure, they, they, I'm sure they have, but for me it was never a... It was never a change, so to speak. It was always like, he's a great actor, let's work with him. You know, when you mm -hmm. audition people or when you sort of meet them, you get that sense of how they see a character, how they talk about it. Uh, but yes, luckily with OTT, they are getting the space to sort of explore themselves as well. And uh, yeah, I'm sure the audiences are also uh, accepting them in, yeah. in, in, a, in a better way than more than cinemas. OTT shows have also played a huge impact in the portrayal of women in Indian entertainment and back during Women's Day I had watched one of the interviews where they had also said that you know films never gave them that opportunity what OTT has given them and we have seen characters like Shifali in Human and uh, Delhi Crime and Tiska in Dahan, Sushmita in Arya. So do you think even as filmmakers and audiences have we given the credit and importance that they have they deserve or we are still a long way to go? Tiska and Dahan, yeah. 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 Um, no, so I, you're, you're right. I mean, again, like I think the content we make, and Javed Sahib had said this uh, a long time back. Like, the stories we tell is a reflection of the kind of society we live in. Mm -hmm. And I feel uh, over the last decade or so, uh, women are getting empowered much more than a few decades back. So I feel the stories that that are coming out are also from that milieu of um, what we see around yeah. us, essentially. And uh, these fantastic actors that you just named are getting a chance to do it because those characters are written that way. Yeah. Uh, the writers are writing those characters, keeping that struggle in mind, whether it's an underdog story, whether it's a story of a, a, a matriarch, whether it's, you know, um, mm. a, a woman cop. Um, these stories are coming from uh, the writer's uh, imagination uh, and observation of what we see around. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it is... Uh, in line with what we see uh, around us or sometimes it's infused into what if yeah. this was the case. Um, and so in the last 8-10 years, that's been accepted well by the audience, I feel. Um, so all power to such writers who, who create these fantastic roles for women. It has actually come along when I'm really expecting more amazing content from you all. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.